The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was growing up, for every night as long as I can remember, after bedtime prayers, one or both of my parents would tuck me in. Then my dad would place his hand on my head and say a version of the blessing we heard today in our first reading. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he show you his kindness and grant you his peace. And then my dad would trace the sign of the cross on my forehead in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we begin this new year, I don't think there's anyone who would object to receiving a few extra blessings from God as we head into 2021. I mean, I think we can all agree that 2020 was a challenging year, to say the least. We could use all the help we can get. But what is a blessing, anyways? What does it mean to be blessed? Is it just like a Catholic version of good luck? No. Depending on your upbringing or whatever customs you grew up with, you may have been taught some frankly superstitious practices that were thought to bring good luck in the new year. For me, it wasn't actually solar calendar new year that was the big deal, but rather lunar new year. And one of the Chinese customs in my house growing up was that you weren't supposed to wash your hair on New Year's Eve lest you accidentally wash out the good luck you might be carrying into the new year. And while that sounds a little silly, and it was, the temptation to place our hope in seemingly innocent but superstitious practices, like not washing your hair on New Year's Eve just in case, or even other more sinister occult and dangerous ones, I think comes from a reaction to the powerlessness we feel in our human condition. A powerlessness that I think many of us have felt a little more acutely this past year than ever before. And so in our desire to protect ourselves and those we love, it's understandable that we might feel tempted to hedge our bets, so to speak, just in case, to carry out, to do certain things, thinking that by doing them, we're somehow guaranteeing a future outcome. But I hope it's plain to see that all superstition of the harmless or the more dangerous kind, ultimately comes from a place of fear. Fear that God is somehow not going to come through for us. That fear that God doesn't love us enough to provide what we need. And so we can be tempted to turn to irrational beliefs about things. But in our second reading today, I think the Apostle Paul challenges us on these fears and reminds us that We are no longer slaves, but sons and daughters, children of God, because of the spirit of his son Jesus that God has poured into our hearts. We are no longer slaves to the powers of the universe or to fate or whatever. We are children of God. And if we see in ourselves this desire to bless our own children, how much more does God desire to bless us, his children, in Christ? Clearly, God does want to bless us, because even in our first reading, we hear how God was instructing Moses about how Aaron and his sons, the priests of the Old Covenant, were to bless the children of Israel. Our psalm response today echoes this desire. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Ultimately, to be blessed is to live in this freedom of the children of God, the freedom that comes from trusting that God does love us, that God will be gracious to us and bless us and provide for our needs, 
even in the midst of uncertain times and difficult situations. Being children of God is not just some abstract metaphor. It's reality. It's the deepest reality about who we are. We see in the flesh, in the events of Christmas, what God's care for his children looks like, even in uncertain times and difficult situations. If we see how God cared and provided for the events around the birth of Jesus at Christmas, how much more does God care for each one of us, for whom he sent his son Jesus into the world to be our Savior? Like Mary in today's Gospel, treasuring these things and pondering them in our heart can strengthen our sense of God's care for us as his children. And Mary is a reminder of God's care for us on this feast when we celebrate her as the mother of God. Mary is a witness to the fact that Christmas is real. She was a witness to all of these events. Every time we look at our favorite images of her, every time we think about or meditate on her, every time we ask her to pray for us or for her motherly protection, we are reminded that her little child is our brother. And if we are children of God in Christ, then Mary, too, is our mother. We don't need to be afraid. We are blessed. God is gracious, and God will bless us.